your father is a rich man. <laughs> Master Mix. It's Groove Phase from Ghana with his song Ogogologo, Pure African Music Bliss. Hello, you're watching Sahara TV. It's Saturday, June 16, 2012, and it's time for Africurrent. This is the part of the show when we give you a snapshot of what's happening in Africa. Some of these stories you may have heard and some you haven't. Because on AfriCurrent, we like to highlight stories that are not being told in Western mainstream media. And I have a lot of news to share with you today. First, in Nigeria, the head of the Stock Exchange Regulation Board has been suspended. Then, new infrastructure is helping to change the dire situation in Kenya's northern region. And finally, a mysterious disease in East Africa has some people seeking help from traditional herbalists. I have these stories for you and more. I'm Chika Odoa. Stay tuned for this week's edition of AfriCurrent. <laughs> The crisis in Nigeria's Stock Exchange Regulation Board is getting worse. Its Director General has been suspended from her post. Arumna Ote has been ordered to take a compulsory leave. That order came from her fellow colleagues at the Board of Securities and Exchange Commission. Ote is facing serious allegations for the misappropriation of 3 billion naira. That's more than 18 million U.S. dollars. With the Director General on suspension, the board plans to conduct a thorough investigation. In Ethiopia, the federal government has banned Skype and other private forms of VOIP communications. That's Voice Over Internet Protocol. But that's not all. Government authorities have put in place an internet filtering system to monitor how people in Ethiopia are using the internet. Anyone caught using illegal internet calling services could pay a hefty fine or face up to 15 years in prison. The Ethiopian government has been known to censor and block information, especially from independent media. Word has it that if you search for Skype on Google in Ethiopia, nothing shows up. Infrastructure is showing up all over the place in Kenya's northern region. An oil pipeline, a railway, a wind farm, and an extensive highway are all new sites that are under construction. The wind farm that will be built in the Turkana region will be the largest in Africa and will have the capacity to supply 20% of Kenya's energy needs. Perhaps this may indicate a new era for those living in northern Kenya. For decades, the area has been neglected. Temperatures here may reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a harsh environment, and the people who live here are the poorest in Kenya. In the Somali capital city, things are not as bad as they used to be. The city that was unofficially rated as the most dangerous in the world is actually getting safer. In the past few months, the Somali capital city of Mogadishu has experienced relative peace and stability. Expatriates are returning, embassies are reopening, and the hotel industry is booming. But issues still remain. The Somali federal government collapsed in 1991. Attempts to restore it have proven difficult. Al-Shabaab militants once controlled the capital city until they were pushed out by African Union forces. But with the new sustained peace, Somalis in the diaspora are making their way back home. Togo. It's a relatively quiet country, but for the past few days, anti-government protests have taken its capital city by storm. These are shots from the 2010 rallies. This week, protesters hit the streets to speak out against a system that allows a president to stay in office for an unlimited number of terms. That's the current president, Fureg Nasigbe. His family has ruled the country for more than four decades. It's time for the number of the day.
Today's number is 3,000. There are more than 3,000 reported cases of nodding disease in northern Uganda. Nodding disease has no cure. Victims suffer from violent seizures, scars on the skin, and mental disabilities. Many children even die from it. Scientists are baffled by this mysterious disease. It's believed that it destroys the brain tissue and may come from a parasitic worm. Another theory says the symptom may come from contaminated meat or lack of vitamin B. Now, cases have spread to the rest of Uganda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and other parts of East Africa. Doctors don't have a cure for it yet, so some people are visiting traditional herbalists to find some sort of relief. For this week's African History Fact, we remember the youth-led anti-apartheid protest from more than 35 years ago. On June 16th in 1976, about 12,000 students in Soweto, South Africa, rallied against a government policy that mandated all classes to be taught in Afrikaans. That's the language of South Africa's white population. About 100 students were killed and thousands were jailed. The rebellion marked a new era in South Africa's history and sparked a series of rallies that continued for 18 months, during which more than 1,000 people died, including the freedom fighter Stephen Biko. We believe that in our country there shall be no minority, there shall be no majority, there shall just be people. The Soweto uprising was depicted in the hit film Serafina. Every year, June 16th is remembered as Youth Day in South Africa. That's all I have for you today. For information on these stories and more, you can visit SaharaReporters.com. Also, check out our website. That's www.SaharaTVOnline.com. For the latest updates, follow Sahara TV on Facebook and on Twitter. I'm Chico Odua. Thank you for watching this week's edition of African. <laughs>